Hi, I'm Karen Grete. Today is December 1st. It was the birth of my father and in memory of him I have already lit the candle, the Danish advent calendar. It's a tradition to burn the candle a little bit every day until the December 24th when it's Christmas in Denmark. I'm going to make Ebleskiver today. Uh, it's one of my favorite desserts. And of course we can eat Ebleskiver any time of the year, but at Christmas time it's a tradition to have Gluck and Ebleskiver together. The ingredients I have right here on the table, and I have some sugar. I have two eggs. And then I have some buttermilk. I add one tablespoon of cream to the buttermilk. Approximately a tablespoon of cream. And I'll pour that in here. I'll whip it up. It's pretty easy to make it. Alright, and at this point I'm going to add the baking powder. We have a tablespoon, oh, no not a tablespoon, a teaspoon of baking powder. And a teaspoon of cardamom. You can use different kinds of flavoring. I like the cardamom, but you might want some lemon peel instead of the cardamom, so it's up to you how you like to flavor it. I also use a pinch of salt. Not that much. Again, it's up to you how, how much salt. I mean, some people don't really want too much salt. Add it all in here. Whip it up a little bit again, and it's almost ready to be poured into the Ebleskiver pan. I have um, a cast iron Ebleskiver pan, and I really like it. And I better turn it on because it has to be hot when we make our Ebleskiver. The name Ebleskiver. It actually means apple slices if you translate it. And you can add a little bit of apples to the dough, but I'm not going to do that today. And I think my frying pan or my apple scooper pan is almost ready to go. First though, I have to add a little bit of margarine. You can use margarine or you can use oil or even butter. Some people prefer butter, so try it out and see what you like best. And it's really nice and bubbly, so I can add the batter. One tablespoon in each. That'll be sufficient. And it doesn't take that long to make them. Yeah, you see, it's already getting firm around the edges. You want to wait till it's bubbly and you can tell that it has been baked around the edges here. And I'm using a knitting pan. That's what my grandmother and my mother did. So that's a tradition to use a, a knitting pin in my family. And I think most people do that. You can also use a fork to, because you have to turn the apple skewer over. As soon as it's a little baked a little bit more. It's almost ready. I think I can oh, not quite. Just tip it over a little bit and see if it's getting brown on the other side. Oh, it's still not ready. Guess I just have to be patient here. This one can go now. 
you see it's nicely brown on the other side. So I start tipping them over. As you can see, that the leading pin really works well for this. Last time I was in Copenhagen, I had with an apple skewer when at the Dong the Tea Hotel. They had the, the sidewalk cafe open. And everybody was sitting out there enjoying it. It was really cozy. Looks like the flame is uneven. They get done fast on one side than the other. And actually, I see those here already baked. And the other ones take a little longer for some reason. But I think you know now what what to do. And of course, I'll put some more batter in, uh, in here and hope they all get done in no time. Also, I think it's time to turn it down a little bit. And the way I eat my Ebbly skewer is we will sprinkle them with a little bit of powdered sugar. It's right here. So now they're getting big fast. All of a sudden it goes real fast. And I'm going to eat one of my Ebbly skewer. We like to dip it, have a little jam with the Ebbly skewer. Like this. Mmm, it tastes really good. And of course, I want my Glück. Merry Christmas!